Hey everyone, welcome back to Kellenberg's second Fusion 360 video for builders and designers. I hope you enjoyed your December break, and over break and into January, I've been working on a robot project and it's just in the works. I hope you also fiddled around in this software, got used to it and comfortable, and I did want to show you guys today how to get started joining and creating your own components and bodies. As you can see here, I already started one half of the chassis of my robot, and I want to go through with you on the other half. I've just been testing around, seeing which is more time consuming and where I can take shortcuts and still get the same results. So before I start, I wanted to talk a little bit about the setup that I haven't talked about in the previous video. For one, display settings, you can change your visual style. Uh, I think the cleanest looking one is shaded with visible edges only. Uh, so click that, and your camera style if you prefer orthographic perspective or a little bit of both. Um, so I have a little bit of both. And if you don't want to see the grid, go into grid and snaps and turn layout grid off. Also some key binds, if you do not want to toggle between orbit, orbit is shift middle mouse button, and pan is just middle mouse button. And you have to hold each one and then that's what you get. It's easier to navigate throughout your design. To start off, you definitely want to create a project, save, name it, whatever you want. And the first thing you want to do is create a component. Component is like a file folder for a computer. It saves your bodies and other components. We're going to go on this side, which is I called the front side chassis. I already copied and pasted the same thing from the back side. And I want to start with you um, just creating a component. So you select the uh, assembly and you click new component and let's name this support and one thing to note for things to be moved the timeline cursor needs to be at the end down here otherwise for some reason fusion 360 will not allow you to move items into components i don't know why that is uh, i had to google it and and if you are ever in concern with some of your actions on fusion 360 Definitely go to the forums and you'll definitely find your answer after some time. So that's one way to create an assembly after you put all the blocks in. Or you can create the component first and then add the objects in later, which is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to add another component and call this one wheel and axle. And what I'm going to do is into here, I'm actually going to put some parts that I'm going to be using to copy basically what I have on this side over here. So I'll be right back when I have all the parts. One thing I did want to mention, the reason why you want to unlink or break the link on parts is because the link basically says it is taking the original sketch or the original object and any modifications you do in this project will affect the original part. And that's kind of not maybe what we want. So it might become good to get into the habit to unlink everything just so that way, if you do happen to change something, you don't have to go back and undo all your work just because you didn't break your link. And a quick thing to do, if you do not want to keep dragging in and unbreaking links, you can copy a part that you need multiple times, control C, and then just control V, and that will do the exact same thing. So I need three of these parts. For now, I'm not going to be naming my parts, but if you are wanting to create many, many robotic projects, I do recommend naming the different components, so that way it's easier to find and edit those objects back when you made a mistake or something like that. Uh, so I just recommend naming your parts. But for the sake of this video, I will not be naming my parts, but I probably will go back and name them in the future. All right, so I think I have all the parts here um, because I already did the bearing flats, which are very important. And I also recommend if you don't really know which parts are supposed to go together. Look at different Vex Robotics competition videos, see the different types of robots. Sometimes people do showcases on YouTube and perhaps just ask other members in robotics because uh, over time and experience you do learn there is no one way to start robotics and the more research you do and the more questions you have to answer, 
the more you'll know in the future. Some of the wheels, by the way, do have these metal shaft inserts, but the Omni wheels for this uh, project for some reason don't, so that's why I imported three. The motor also, as you can see, has a slot where it doesn't quite fit into the axle, and that's why it also needs a metal shaft insert. Uh, and we'll all be joining that. So there are two ways to create a joint. You can either go into Assemble and Joint or just click J. So we're gonna do that. I'm going to first joint the axle and I know I want the axle to go there. Um, and again, remember that the motor has two spaces for the screws and they're gonna go there. So what I did basically was I chose one point and you select the first component is the one that's going to be moved and the second component is the one where you want to join to that object. And of course, if you don't like the placement, this bottom here says flip and it does it for you in that correct placement. I want this to stick out just slightly. I think I want it to be uh, 0.75. So that's the first joint and we didn't actually finish. So I wonder why that went away. And if that does happen, if it goes away, down in your timeline, you just right click the joint and edit joint again. We were in the position tab, you want to go to motion and change this to revolute. It will show an animation and this is the correct direction that I want it to go because the axle does rotate across that plane. And that is your first joint down. You can also find this in the joint folder here. So under your front side chassis, you'll see a revolute joint and it, this one is number seven, I guess, because I've been fooling around a little bit. Uh, but you'll find it, or if you can't find it, you can also go down to your timeline. Next, what we want to do is take our wheel and create a joint onto there. Another thing about jointing is in the render phase, you will only see the object that you want to joint. It saves your computer's GPU graphics card, um, and it makes it run just a little bit smoother. So now, since the wheel is connected to already an axle that has a revolute joint, you can make this one rigid and click OK. Now I want to take one of these metal shaft inserts and join them to one side of the wheel. But the thing is, since the wheel is connected to the axle, you want to join it directly to the axle. I'm afraid that that may have not selected the correct center, so you can always undo without clicking cancel by Xing out the second selection and redoing the selection. As I said, yep, see there's the center now. Uh, after that, you can double check to see where it is. Okay, it's good. So you want it to be on that flip side and we want it to be rotated this way, 90 degrees, which means that it'll go to 270. That does look good. That is lining up with the bearing. However, we also want it to go next to the bearing. And that should be it and it's snug in there, and now you can see that the axle will spin accordingly without grinding the motor. So let's say we don't want to redo all of the work we just did. We're going to actually copy this wheel and axle and just paste it onto the other side, and that's how simple it can be. So what you wanna do is just Control C this and Control V, and it will create another part of it. Um, what we want to do, however, is move it 90 degrees. We're going to create a joint of this copied section. And as you can see, only the axle moves purely due to render. And we're going to pull it. And now you basically have this entire thing on this side now. And as you can see, this didn't touch this because all you did was create another joint that is only correspondent to that other section. Now what you want to do is, since you created that new joint, it will not see itself under the front chassis portion, so you just want to drag that in, and now it becomes a part of that assembly. So if you want to know more about the differences between bodies and components, I recommend checking the video in the description. It is going to be part of tonight's assignment, just so you get a better understanding as to how the entirety of components work. I would also like you to try and fool around with joints and try and create maybe just a chassis of your robot. If you do end up creating your robot, go ahead and send a picture or video over to your coding buddy and they're actually going to make codes that represent and make your robot work. In next month's video, I do wish to go over more parts and components and if I find any new tips and tricks, I will be sure to let you know. So continue doing and keeping up the great work and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.